خوابید که ساعت هفت شام شام داریم شش شش شام داریم پس زمین این روشنه شیش ما که ساعت شام داریم تشویق میکنیم که همه تون تشریف داشته باشین زرش کلو با مرغ will be trading. We're going to have many volunteers Here? Mm -hmm. in a minute. So we should have some more. Mm -hmm. Cool. Are we ready? Yes. All right. Wonderful. Okay. So we are going to talk about an evangelism tool. You have the picture of the shovel there. Right? And it's on page 25 in your workbooks. And so we're going to learn a very simple testimony tool. We've been going through the parable of the sower in Mark 4. Right after Mark 4 and Mark 5, we hear about a demon-possessed man that Jesus heals and sets free. And, and he says, I want to come travel with you. <laughs> and Jesus says, no, you cannot. <laughs> right? 
He says, go back and tell your people the good things that God has done in your life. بهش میگه که برگرد به مردم خودت به خانوادت و دوستانت بگو که خدا با تو چه کار کرده. So that's what we're going to do now. پس ما الان این رو میخوایم تمرین کنیم. We're going to learn a simple, simple, simple way of sharing your testimony. میخوایم یک طریق خیلی ساده، خیلی ساده برای در میون گذاشتن شهادت زندگیمون یاد بگیریم. And we're going to give you a simple way to start that conversation. و میخوایم الان یک طریق ساده برای شروع اون مکالمه به شما بدیم. So I'm going to pray and then we'll get started. پس دعا میکنیم و شروع میکنیم. Jesus. Thank you so much that you've called us to to share our faith. God, you could write the gospel on the clouds, but you choose instead to use us. با انسان ها در میون بذاری ولی تو ما رو انتخاب کردی برای این کار. Thank you for this privilege. متشکریم برای این افتخار. God help us today as we put together our testimonies. خداوند کمکمون کن که در حالی که میخوایم شهادت هامون رو با هم یاد بگیریم چطور منتقل کنیم. I pray that you would help us use the right words. کمک کن به ما کلمات صحیح رو بده. And that you'd help us communicate in a way that is loving and authentic. کمک کن ما رو که بتونیم اون کلمات رو به طریقی ساده، زیبا و با محبت منتقل کنیم. Thank you, Jesus. متشکریم از شما. Amen. Amen. Okay, so uh, every farmer, every sower needs good tools. هر برزگری احتیاج به ابزار صحیح و خوب داره. And so uh, here's an example of what some of the tools during Jesus' day would have looked like. You can see a sickle up here that they got the wheat with. Yeah, so maybe a tool shop in Jesus' day would have looked like this. Okay. So today we're going to explain an evangelism tool. الان میخوایم ابزار بشارت رو با But before we jump into the tool ولی قبل از اینکه به اونجا برسیم I just want to remind you of a few important verses میخوام چندین آیه خیلی مهم رو به یادتون بیارم Actually uh, for time's sake I'm going to shorten it به خاطر کمبود وقت مختصرش میکنم We've shared some of these بعضی از اون آیه ها رو گفتیم So I'll, I'll paraphrase those پس الان به اونا اشاره میکنم But then we'll turn to one verse in a minute together ولی بعد یک آیه رو به اون آیه کلیدی قرار میدم In Matthew 9 در انجیل متا فصل 9 I, I shared with you verse 36 about Jesus' compassion for the lost. The next two verses are important also. Verses 37 and 38. Jesus says the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. We need to look outside and see opportunity. لازمه که ما به بیرون نگاه کنیم و فرصت ها رو ببینیم. It might look like chaos. ممکنه که اونجا خیلی هرج و مرج به نظر بیاد. It might look like anger and confusion. ممکنه که اونجا خشم و سردرگمی دیده بشه. It might look like opposition and persecution. ممکنه که مقاومت، مخالفت و جفا باشه. But we can look with eyes of faith and realize that it is a ripe harvest. ولی اگه با چشمان ایمان به اون بیرون نگاه کنیم، می‌بینیم که حساد فراوان اونجا در انتظار ماست. Jesus said it was the The workers that were needed. And so he says, pray that the Lord would send workers into his harvest. And then immediately after that in chapter 10, what happens? He sends them out into that harvest. Okay, so we need to remember that the harvest is plentiful. مهمه که بدونیم حساد فراوانه. We need to remember Matthew 28:18 through 20. لازمه به یاد بیاریم انجیل متی فصل 28 آیات 18 و 20. I have been called to go and make disciples. من خوانده شدم که برم و شاگرد بسازم. That begins with evangelism. اون با بشارت شروع میشه. But it continues with discipleship. But this is something I have been called to. I mentioned earlier Acts 1.8. Jesus says that you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem. Yeah. 
Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Right? Even today we're called to the ends of the earth. I mentioned to you Acts 17, 26 through 27. 26 and 27. Where, where Paul says to the, the people of Athens, God has determined the times and the places that people live. And he's done this so that people would reach out and find him. Wherever you live in this world, God wants to use you in that community. You're in Holland right now. This is not an accident. However you ended up getting here, God wanted you here. And he wanted you here so that you would find Christ here and help others find Christ here. And if you're watching online, maybe you're in the wonderful country of Iran. A very wonderful God that loves the Iranian people has put you there as a witness. He loves your brothers and sisters too much to leave them without a witness. So we join the Lord in his strategic work on earth. And we make the most of every opportunity. Colossians 4, 5. I have not shared that with you yet. But it commands us to make the most of every opportunity. Yeah. So we make the most of every opportunity. I want to turn together to Acts 20. Verse 24. Paul is speaking to the Ephesian elders. Yeah, he's leaving them. Uh, he knows it's the last time he's going to see their faces. He's encouraging them. He, he's warning them that false teachers are going to come into the church. He lets them know that there will be persecution. And he says something so, so wonderful. In verse 24. تنها اگر بتوانم دور خود را به پایان رسانم و خدمتی را که از خداوند عیسی یافتم به کمال انجام دهم خدمتی که همانا اعلام بشارت فیض خود است so he says i consider my life worth nothing to me میگه زندگی رو من هیچ می انگارم right only that i might complete the task that جان را برای خود بی ارزش می انگارم فقط اگه بتونم اون دعوت رو اون وظیفه و ماموریتم رو به کمال برسونم the task of preaching the gospel و اون وظیفه رسوندن پیام انجیل this is a man with an education این مردیه که تحصیل کرده this is a man that had an incredible career that he'd left behind این مردیه که واقعا یک گذشته خدمتی تاریخ خدمتی فوق العاده رو پشت سر گذاشته this is a man that had literally left everything for the lord و واقعا همه چیز رو به خاطر خداوند رها کرده. He was probably a member of the Sanhedrin. احتمالاً او یکی از اعضای سانهدرین بود. Because he talks about casting as vote. برای اینکه در مورد رای دادن صحبت می‌کنه. To be a member of the Sanhedrin meant that he had to be married. برای اینکه عضو سانهدرین باشی بعد می‌تونی بعد ازدواج کرده می‌بودی. But it seems in 1 Corinthians 7 that he was not. ولی در اول قرنتیان هفت به نظر می‌رسد که پولس مجرد بود. 
We don't know for sure. But it's possible that even his wife had left him when he became a Christian. Mm-hmm. Um, he had given up everything for the Lord. Yeah. And he'd said, I count my life worth nothing to me just that I might preach this gospel. Yeah. He understood why he was here. And he wanted to share the good news with others. So today I want to give you a tool that you can use to share the good news with others. There are lots of good tools. But this is one of the best I know. And one reason I like it is it's so simple. We're going to talk tomorrow about discipleship. And as you make disciples, you need to help disciples learn to share their faith. And the best way to help them do that is to give them a simple tool. So maybe you don't need a tool and you could just share the gospel very easily and naturally. But the new believer just looks at you and says, I could never do this. <laughs> so it's good to have a simple tool that you use that you can demonstrate. And then you can teach them and guess what then they can teach the others who teach the others so this tool is called the one minute witness because you're supposed to share your testimony in about one minute this can be done we're going to help you and it's part of the five star evangelism uh, process. There have been a few million people that have come to Christ through this tool. And the uh, five-star team is trusting God for 40 million salvations this year. Mm-hmm. 40. 40. Yeah. Amen, right? And so you get to be a part of this incredible thing that they're trusting God for. All right, so let's jump right into it. You, you, you all have hands. <laughs> so I want you to put them up in the air. You don't have to wave at my jacket this time. <laughs> but you're, you have five fingers. If any of you has... M- Six fingers, you have to hold one down. <laughs> so we have five fingers. Uh, and I'm going to start with the first one. And I'm going to have you repeat this as, as we go. The first is permission. So say it in Iranian. Okay, permission. Okay, this is the first one. This is a great way to start an evangelistic conversation. Yeah. Remember we talked about meeting someone and starting a conversation. And then transitioning to a spiritual topic. This is a way to do both. And it's always fun. It's very easy. And you'll make a new friend every time you do it. It's very rare that somebody does not like this. I think it's happened to me twice. And that's okay. Not, not a problem. So, for permission, we want you to ask Three questions. So write these three questions down. The first one is, excuse me, may I ask you a question? That's simple. May I ask you a question? 
May I ask you a question? You could do this at the airport. At the bus stop. At the restaurant. With somebody walking. It's very easy. Excuse me. May I ask you a question? Yeah. And what do most people say? Of course. What would you like to ask? The next question usually surprises them. But it's so much fun. You say, what's the greatest thing that's ever happened to you? What's the greatest thing that's ever happened to you? And they usually go, Wait, wait, I don't know. Uh, they might say, I don't know the greatest thing. Well, that's fine. Tell me something wonderful. Okay. They start to think. They start to smile. <laughs> right? Because they're thinking of positive memories. Yeah. Okay. And then they're going to tell you something. Usually this is very positive. It's when I got married. And now you ask, just talk to them about it. This isn't a trick. You are genuinely going to take an interest in that person's story. Mm-hmm. So ask them some follow-up questions. If they say, getting married. When did you get married? Yeah. Uh, what's your wife's name? Uh, you could ask whatever questions might come to mind. And you could share from your story. Yeah. I want to ask you to be careful. Don't uh, one-up them. Don't, don't. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody says the greatest thing that ever happened to me was graduating from high school. Yeah. Don't say, oh yes, when I graduated college, it was wonderful. Build a bridge with this person, but don't go over them. Yeah. Show them you care. Uh, look them in the eyes. Yeah. Smile. Right. Those are uh, correct in, in with Persian yes. people. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, ask questions. This is very important. Listen. Listen carefully. Don't do this. What's the greatest thing that's ever happened to you? <laughs> Listen to them. Very often as they talk, you will find places that are that relate to the gospel. Yeah. Or places that relate to your, your story, your testimony. So, so excuse me. May I ask you a question? What's the greatest thing that's ever happened to you? Okay. Usually it will be a very good response. Twice I've had a very sad response. Okay. Don't worry. You can, you can relate to the person. One lady tells me the greatest thing that happened in my life also was the worst. خانومی به من گفت که بهترین چیز که تو زندگی برای من اتفاق افتاد در زم بدترین بود. This was at a restaurant. این توی یک رستوران صورت And she, she's the waitress. و او خانومی بود که داشت اونجا سرو می‌کرد. She starts crying. و شروع کرد به گریه کردن. She says my son being born was the greatest thing. گفت تولد پسرم به دنیا آمدنش بهترین چیز بود. And when he died it was the worst thing. ولی وقتی که او فوت کرد اون بدترین واقع بود. Uh, so even in this situation it's okay. پس حتی در این لحظات هم you, اوکی هست you, built a bridge with this person. شما میتونید باش بازم ارتباط برقرار کنید and you can now share your testimony. پس شما میتونید شهادت okay. زندگی خودتون رو بهش بدید that's the third question. حالا سوال سوم okay. چی باید باشه the third question here is can I tell you the greatest thing that's happened to me آیا اجازه دارم میتونم من اون چیز عالی okay. رو که برای من اتفاق okay. افتاده به شما بگم in the case with that lady و در مورد این خانم 
I said the greatest thing that's ever happened to me گفتم بهترین چیزی که بر من اتفاق افتاده might give you a lot of hope in your situation به تو امید زیادی بده در این شرایطی که هستی Can I share that with you میتونم اینو با در میون بذارم And she said of course گفت مسلما okay. Uh, but if it's a happy conversation, <coughs> you can also just say, can I tell you the greatest thing that's ever happened to me? And you might even say this. It'll take less than two minutes. <laughs> uh, you could do this even when you just have a minute with someone. Okay. And then you're going to share your one minute witness. Okay. So, we're going to jump into that. I'm going to ask a lot of you to volunteer. So, so I want two people to start by, volu- by doing this together. I don't want you to take 10 minutes. <laughs> Just a couple minutes. Would anybody like to try? If you're more shy, this is the one to volunteer for. <laughs> Who would like to do it? Come on, Canada. Okay, you? Come and on. you. Good. Come All right. On. We have two mics. They've yes. both been sanitized. She's both. Yes. Yeah. And we will get them more sanitizer. Uh, we have one here. Oh, He's we bringing had it. One. Oh, sorry. Okay. You know what? I can do this. I will oh. hold this okay. for them both. Okay? Okay. Okay. You remember the three? Okay. Who's going to ask? And who's going to share? I'll like this. Are you going to ask? شما می خواین سوال کنین شما در میون بذارین اوکی اوه اسک اوکی هیر اول دیت جاست سو دیت آره آره فارسی بگو سلام اوکی خواستم بدونم که بهترین و عالیترین اتفاقی که زندگی شما اتفاق افتاده چیه Being, uh, being acquainted with Jesus. Ah, oh, this happens. It's okay. Can I tell you? Can I tell you a secret? When this happens, it's a discipleship opportunity. Yes. And you could even explain to them what you're doing. And ask them if they would like to learn how to share their faith. Okay. And, and maybe they say yes. And then you could, you could teach them. So this, this will happen, but depending on where you're at in the world, more or less, you know? Okay. So, so for the sake of this exercise, can you tell us the second greatest thing? <laughs> I uh, meeting my wife. Ooh. <laughs> Conversation How did you get to know your wife? Perfect. I was at work. <laughs> and when I saw her, I was very open to getting to know her. Wow. <laughs> what was about her that was interesting? This is excellent. You see how she's she's being thoughtful. She's engaging. This guy is happy thinking about the first time he met his wife. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Her being kind. The way she speaks. And the peace she had. Wonderful. Was really interesting for her. Wonderful. Um. آیا اون هم یک یک مسیحی هستش؟ نه، ایشون الان اینجا مسیحی نیست. آگوستش که آخه مسیح. 
You don't have to talk for 10 minutes. I guess I have two. You don't have to talk for 10. You don't have to talk for two. This is a relationship. لازم نیست که شما با ده نفر حرف بزنید یا دو نفر این مسابقه نیست این برقرار کردن یک ارتباطه و لازم نیست که بدو این برای این سوالاتون با سرعت که به هدفتون برسید شما باید ارتباط برقرار ولی در ضمنم نیازی نیست که همش ادامه بدیم به طرح سوالات و همینجوری تو سوالات گیر کنید جایی که احساس میکنین الان وقتشه خیلی ممنون برای اینکه اینا رو با من در میان گذاشتی میتونم من به شما بگم بهترین چیز که بر من اتفاق افتاده چی بود فقط چند دقیقه طول میکشه میتونم من بهترین اتفاق زندگی ما به شما بگم Can I tell you? Well, for sure, Nisha. Yes, I would be happy. Wonderful. Oh, okay. well, now you're gonna have to wait. Okay. But you can come back later. <laughs> okay, give him a hand. Okay, I wanted to get them demonstrating because we're gonna ask all of you for participation. Okay. So, uh, and it won't be embarrassing. It'll be fun. خجالت آوری نیست. We're all going to have some fun with this. همون قراره که یک کم بخندیم. Okay. So, number one is permission. شماره یک پس چی هست؟ اجازه. And three questions. سه تا سوال پشتش میاد. May I ask you a question? اجازه دارم ازتون سوالی بپرسم؟ If they say yes, what is the greatest thing that has ever happened to you? بهترین چیز که برای شما تا به حال اتفاق افتاده چی هست؟ You smile, you establish eye contact. ارتباط چشمی برقرار می‌کنی. صحبت رو ادامه میدی سوالات دیگه میکنی گوش میدی so مرسی که اینا رو به من گفتی Can I tell you the greatest thing that's ever happened to me? سوال سوم میتونم من به شما بگم که بهترین اتفاق زندگی من چی بوده؟ It'll take about a minute. این فقط یه دقیقه بیشتر طول نکشه. It'll take less than two or something. یکی دو دقیقه بیشتر طول نکشه. Almost always they say sure. I would love to hear. غالباً افراد میگن بله مسلما دوست دارم بفرمایید. I mean I, I don't know I don't I, I'm being honest with you it is rare that somebody says no. با شما با بخوام صادق باشم کم اتفاق افتاده. واقعا خیلی کم okay. که بگن نه. And your heart is going to try to lie to you. و دلت ممکنه به تو دروغ بگه. And say they don't want to hear this. و بگه نمیخوان بهت گوش right. بدن. مشتاق they're, نیستن. They're going to think you're you're just trying to use them. و اونا الان فکر میکنن که تو میخوای ازشون سوء استفاده کنی. Those are lies from Satan. اینا دروغ های شریره که میاد در اون لحظه. Ignore them. اونا رو نادیده بگیر. And just by faith share your testimony. Okay. okay, so that's number two. The second finger. Number one is. Number two is. Permission. Number two is. Before Christ. Before Christ. Yes. قبل از مسیح. Yes, I hadn't told you yet. So. اینو هنوز نگفته بودم. Before Christ. قبل از مسیح. So, if you come up to someone in Iran. اگه شما در ایران به کسی برمیخورید. And you just say, "Hey, I'm a Christian." و میاد بهش میگید که "Hey, من یه مسیحی هستم." میتونم به چیزی در مورد مسیح بگم. Maybe many would say, "I want to hear." شاید خیلی‌ها بگن که بله دوست دارم بشنوم. But maybe somebody would say, "I don't want to talk about Jesus." ولی ممکن است بعضی‌ها بگن من اصلا نمی‌خوام در مورد مسیح بشنوم. So the first part of your story پس اولین قسمت داستان شما We want to share your before Christ. میخوایم که okay. قبل از مسیح رو تقسیم کنیم باشه. Just start with who you were. پس بگو که تو قبلا کی بودی. Jesus tells that man that was demon possessed. عیسی مسیح به اون مردی که دیو زده بود چی میگه؟ Go and tell the people the good things God has done for you. میگه برو به خانوادت و قومت بگو که خود کارهای خوبی رو که خدا برای تو انجام داده رو بگو. What do you think he told them? فکر می‌کنی اون مرد به رفت به قومش و خانوادش چه خبری داد؟ He said, "I was there. I had a legion." I, I used, yes, I used to be demon possessed. <laughs> Man, diva manu tasqir karde budan, div zade budam ye lashkar div az man birun umad. For them to understand the good things Jesus had done in his life. Va baraye un mardom barin ke betunan dar konan ke Isa masik kar khubi dar zendegi mard karde. He had to explain who he had been. U bayat aval tozih midat ke qablan u chi bud. So we're going to do that. 
پس ما اول این کارو بعد انجام and we've already told them it's one minute ما بهشون گفتیم که یک دقیقه بیشتر طول نمیکشین شاید so we're not going to tell them our whole life story پس قرار نیست که از پیدایش تا مکاشفه داستان زندگیمون رو تعریف کنیم a lot of times when christians tell their testimony خیلی از اوقات مسیحیان که میخوان شهادت زندگی بدن i was born in this city من در این شهر به دنیا اومدم and i had two cats بعد دو تا گربه داشتم but then we moved بعد ما نقل مکان کردیم i did pretty good in school مدرسه‌ام تو مدرسه بچه I like خوبی soccer. بودم فوتبال خیلی دوست <laughs> None of this. Uh, if you, as you build a friendship with this person and you have opportunity, you can share that. If you build a friendship with this person and you have opportunity, you can share that. you can share the good things that God has done in your life. If you build a friendship with this person and you have opportunity, you can share that. But today you're on a mission. Okay? you can share the good things that God has done in your life. If you build a friendship with this person and you and we want to keep it simple. پس میخوایم اینو ساده نگه داریم. We want to keep it clear. میخوایم واضح باشه برای شخص. And we want to keep it easy. و میخوایم آسونش نگه داریم. Easy for them to remember. آسون برای اونها که یادشون باشه. And always think discipleship. و همیشه به فکر شاگرد سازی Because the people you're discipling, when they see this, they need to see that it's easy. و اینکه افرادی هم که شما بعد هاش شاگرد سازی میکنین. اونها هم باید سادگی و واضح بودن این مسئله so رو ببینن. پس so we want this to be clear. So you're going to write three things. پس شما سه چیز می نویسید دوباره. Three words that describe who you were before Christ. سه کلمه که نشون میده okay. یعنی بیان میکنه که شما قبل از ملاقات با مسیح کی بودید. Do not use Christianese. <laughs> لطفا کلمات مسیحی به چی؟ کریست. Yeah. مسیحی خیلی به کار نبرید روحانی روحانی زش نکنید آره روحانی زش نکنید زیاد کلماتی رو کلمات سخت به کار نبرید I used to be unrighteous. Man, no order. Chi budam? Unsanctified. No order budam. Okay. Don't talk like this. Man, ne jot na dostam. Also, don't use words that are uh, this worldly. I need to explain that better. Don't use words that could apply to Christians and non-Christians. I'm telling kalamot ro be kar na barid. به کار نبرید که هم برای مسیحیان yeah. و هم غیر مسیحیان میشه استفاده کرد. So کرم. don't say something like this. مثلا اینو نگید. There was a time in my life when I was uneducated. زمانی بود در زندگیم که من تحصیلات right? نداشتم. And poor. و فقیر بودم. And uh, and I don't know, you can come up with something else. <laughs> و چیزی که برای همه صادقه. Christians could be those things, yes? مسیحیان میتونن yeah. بی سواد هم باشن، فقیر هم باشن. So you want to be honest about the characteristics of your sinful person that Jesus rescued you در حقیقت شما میخواید صادق باشید در مورد وجه مشخصه شخصیت های شما قبل از اینکه مسیح رو ملاقات کردید alcoholism من میتونید بگین الکلیس addiction من معتاد بودم adultery من در زنا افتادم or lust من مشکل شهوت or anger من مشکل خشم داشتم. Or fear. من ترس داشتم. Uh, or loneliness. من احساس تنهایی عمیق می‌کردم. Or sadness. من واقعا غم داشتم. غم Things عمیق. that hopelessness. او ناامید بودم. Things that the person you're talking to recognizes in their life maybe. چیزهایی که اون شخصی که دارید باش صحبت می‌کنید اونها رو می‌تونه در زندگی خودش هم you, تشخیص بده. And you start simply by saying there was a time in my life when و شما میگید که یه زمانی بود در زندگیم که There was a time in my life when fear and sadness and doubt controlled who I was. زمانی در زندگیم بود که ترس و غم زندگی من رو کنترل میکرد. Those are mine. Fear, sadness, doubt. پس ترس، غم و شک، تردید. ایشون سه کلمه رو به کار If you struggle to know what they are, ask God to help you understand. اگه خودتون مشکل دارید با پیدا uh-huh. کردن اون کلمات از خدا سوال کنید اجازه بدید اونا رو به شما بده family, اگه شما در یک خانواده مسیحی بزرگ شدید uh, think about patterns in your life that describe who you are apart from Christ yes, به الگوهایی در زندگیتون فکر کنید که okay. داشتید و خوب نبود خارج از زندگی مسیحی things that you know Jesus has rescued you و from و میدونید که عیسی مسیح تاثیر yeah. عمیقی روی اون قسمت های منفی زندگیتون داشته okay, how are we doing چطوریم؟ Yeah, are you guys writing your three? می نویسید؟ Yes. Okay. 
I'm going to ask for a few volunteers. Let's see three volunteers. من احتیاج به سه تا داوطلب دارم الان. To come and say there was a time in my life. که بیان و بگن زمانی بود در زندگی من. And then name your three. And you know what? You could maybe give another sentence for for context. But don't give another paragraph for context. So a lot of times I'll just say it like this. خیلی از اوقات من اینجوری میگم. There was a time in my life. زمانی بود در زندگی. When fear and sadness and doubt really controlled who I was. که ترس و غم و شک و تردید زندگی منو پر کرده بود. And even though I was very young. و گرچه من خیلی جوان بودم. Those things were very real. اون چیزها خیلی واقعی بودن. So that that's how I start. اینجوری من شروع میکنم. Okay, who wants to volunteer? حالا کی میخواد دفتر لب بشن؟ My daughter. <laughs> These girls love love sharing their faith. Eliana in the pink there, she did it with our waiter a uh, at, at a restaurant about a month ago. Dokhtaray man khayli imanishun ro ba digaran dar mizaran. Come on, welcome Eliana. Ma gozashte tu restaurant ba kasi ke onja khidmat mikar dar miyun gozashtam. There was a time in my life when I was filled with fear, worry, and stress. زمانی بود در زندگی که من با ترس، نگرانی و استرس پر بودم. Yeah, thank you, Eliana. Thank you, thank you for saying that. It, it, I'll have you do your whole one at some point this weekend, okay? Okay. All right. Who else would like to try? Okay, come on. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait. Ah, okay. قبل از مسیح ما فالگیری و نمیدونم این چیزا باش بودم. مثلا هی قول میگه چی میگه پیش درویش میرفتم گفتم چی میخوا برام بشه چی نمیخوا برام ولی الان به عیسی مسیح میرم پیشش میگم. He says before Jesus I went to fortune tellers a lot. But now I speak about Jesus. Hmm. He's going further. Okay. So, so just tell the first three right now. What are the three? We'll get to that part. So fortune tellers? Okay. I was dead. Uh, now I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, going with both of them. this is, we're going to end with a summary. And the summary is not going back through the whole thing. That's a perfect summary. That's who I was, you know. So do you have just three words before Christ? Uh, I was uh, full of fear. Um, I was angry. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I, um, judged, I was very judgmental. All right. Thank you. Yeah, it's perfect. Perfect. Okay. Who else would like to do it? All right, come on up. Okay, it's good to start with there was a time in my life. You don't know who you're talking to yet. So don't start by saying before Jesus. This is your before Christ. But when you say it, just start with there was a time in my life when. Whatever there, whatever their opinions about Jesus, you're, you're starting with the description of there was a time in my life when. And maybe they're feeling like 
I feel those things. There was a time in my life and then one, two, three. زمانی بود تو زندگیم که من آدم کلاهبرداری بودم. There was a time in my life that I was uh, I was not honest in business. دروغ زیاد میگفتم. I lied a lot. و آدم خطرناک و خشنی بودم. And I was very angry and aggressive. Wow, okay. Merci. Thank Merci. you. All right. I need at least one more person. احتیاج به یک نفرم حداقل یک نفر دیگه دارم. Okay. Papa Jamal and Mosayebar. Yeah. Okay, at least go for them. Here, I could actually come down too so that more people, we can get them real quickly. Here, I'll hold it. When I came to Holland, I was worried about my kids because I had left five kids there. And I had come here. I was worried. I didn't know what to do. So that they come to Holland. But God heard my voice. <laughs> awesome. So worry. That, worry relates to a lot of people. Did he have two others? I was an angry person. Especially those who had been really very bad to me. I, I was filled with anger. I would, I would love them to be dead and I would love to burn them. <laughs> so these are things that I felt wow. I had in my heart. You know, thank you. So a, as you talk with people, did, did he have another one that he wanted to share? No, he's good. Okay. Does anybody else want to share? Okay. Okay, come on up. Come on, you can come up. Okay, remember, start. There was a time in my life. You can stay. You're, you're good. Uh, I'll get you next. I, there was a time in my life that I was addicted and alcohol to... I wanted to control people. And I was suffering lack of love. Ooh. That was awesome. Merci, yeah. Merci. A lot of people are going to are going to connect with that. خیلی از افراد هستن که با همین سه چهار کلمه‌ای که شما صحبت کردین میتونن ارتباط برقرار کنن. Because you're using three, you're you're making it more people that you can connect with. چون شما دارین گروه‌های بیشتری از افراد رو تو این داستانتون. Like if you say I, there was a time when I was an alcoholic. میتونم بگم که من یه زمانی بود که الکلیست بودم. Maybe that person thinks well I'm not an alcoholic. شاید اون شخص فکر کنه که من الکلیست نیستم. But then you say and I was angry. ولی شما میگید که ولی من پر از خشم بودم. You start to hit you hit a couple things and probably one of them is going to relate to this person. شما چند تا نکته رو که میگین یکی از اونها حداقل میتونه با قلب اونها صحبت کنه. Oh wait, we did have to come up here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Why? For the video. I think they're videoing. Okay, come on up. بله آدم من خودم نگران و خیلی منزوی خجالتی بعد در این حال خب معتادم بودم و دیگه آره دیگه همین ترسو ترسو yeah. All right. Uh, you guys were some bad people. <laughs> hey, uh, Paul says, but such were some of you. Yeah. But Jesus has done something special in your lives, right? Okay. So, uh, so we're going to talk about that as well. Okay, so how are we doing? I want to make sure that we're, we're tracking here. Do we have a coffee break at three? I think so. Okay. Yes. Do you guys like coffee and tea breaks? Yes. Okay. Well, let me... Let me give you a little bit of time to work on the next one. 
بذارید یک کم بهتون وقت بدم که بتونید یه قدم بعدی کار کنیم. یه هفت دقیقه هنوز داریم به وقت قهوه. So I'm going to give you a, a little bit of preparation and when we come back we'll, we'll continue with that topic. پس یک چیز آمادگی به عنوان مقدمه میدم که وقتی برگشتیم قدم بعدی رو بریم. So number one is اولی چی بود؟ اجازه. Permission. Number two is دومی چی بود؟ Okay. Before Christ, قبل از Number three is turning point. شماره سه اون نقطه برگشته. Okay, and this is where you begin to tell them about Jesus. اینجا okay. اونجا یکی شما در مورد مسیح بهشون میگید. You've shared I was worried. گفتید که نگران بودم. Dishonest. صادق نبودم. And an alcoholic. الکولیستم بودم. And they're thinking, huh? فکر میکنن عجب آدمی. People don't come up and tell me that every day. <laughs> You've got their interest. And now you're going to tell them about the greatest thing that ever happened to you. You're going to tell them about Jesus. What I want you to do here, and you want to keep this brief, Because we're going to try to keep the whole thing to about a minute. So what we want you to do here is share very briefly your circumstance. Where did you hear this gospel? How did you come to this point? You want to be honest again? And to let them know that this was part of your real life. و میخواین اونا متوجه بشن که این بخشی از زندگی حقیقی شما بوده. My friend, one of my friends talks like this. یکی از دوستام اینجوری صحبت میکنه. He says, uh, one day I was, I was getting ready to eat lunch. یه روز آماده داشتم میشدم نهار بخورم. And I pulled the tray out of the oven. اومدم این سینی اوون رو کشیدم بیرون. And I hear a knock at the door. یهو کسی درمو زد. And, and I open the door and it's my brother. درو باز کردم دیدم برادرمه. And he said, Daryl, I have something that you need. <laughs> Jesus changed my life, and you really need Jesus too. <laughs> that was really a part of his story. Right? So he shares that circumstance when he does his one minute witness. Mine goes like this. I had been going to church with my family. But I never understood what church was all about. But, but one day it clicked. And I understood for the first time. That there was a God that loved me. And that even though I was a sinner, he had come and died for my sins. And rose again to give me eternal life. قیام کرد و منو به حیات ابدی And he promised me that if I trusted him as Savior and Lord, he would forgive me. When I realized what Jesus had done for me, I put my trust in him. Did you see how I included those points of the gospel? It's very good to do that here. Because this person, this might be your last interaction with them. And you want them to walk away at least having that gospel presentation. Yeah. Yeah. So even if you understood the gospel kind of uh, uh, chaotically, maybe you understand it a little bit here, a little bit there. پس حتی اگر شما بشارت انجیل رو به طرز نامنظم یاد گرفتین و اون رو هم قادر به بیانش نیستین به طرز منظم تجربتون رو باشون درست بیان کنید but, but okay. ولی در زم در این اینکه شهادت اون تجربتون رو به سرعت میدین بشارت رو هم درش بگنجونید so I'll, I'll give you my example from the beginning up until where we are now. 
And as we get a coffee break, will you kind of work on yours a little bit? در حالی که میریم قهوه بخوریم شما رو قسمت خودتون کار کنید. And when we come back, I want to have a few volunteers. وقتی برمیگردیم دوست دارم چند تا داوطلب بیشتر اینجا داشته باشیم. So mine goes like this. مال من اینطوره. There was a time in my life. زمانی در زندگیم بود که when fear and sadness and doubt controlled me. ترس و غم و شک و تردید منو کنترل می‌کردن. And even though I was very young, و اگرچه من خیلی جوان بودم Those things were very real. And you know, my family had been taking me to church. But I never quite understood what it was all about. But finally it clicked. ولی بالاخره دو زایم افتاد. I understood that there was a God that loved me. متوجه شدم که خدایی هست که منو دوست داره. Even though I was a sinner. اگر چه من یک گناهکار بودم. And that he had come to this earth and died in my place. و او به این دنیا آمد و به جای من مرد. And then he rose again to give me eternal life. And he made me a promise that if I would believe in him as Savior and Lord, he would forgive me. When I realized what Jesus had done for me, I trusted in him alone as Savior and Lord. It was simple. Simple, clear. It's true. And they understand the gospel in my story. Can you do that? Okay. All right. So let's get a coffee break. And when we come back, we'll have some volunteers. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it'll be. Sharian? It gets fun. And then when you get the whole.